G'day guys and gal. With all the chain blades, power fists, and disproportionately high rates of melee combat in a sci-fi setting, it's easy to forget that there are bigger spaceships in Warhammer 40k that can one-shot armies from orbit. The biggest and best are the flagships, the Gloriana-class vessels of each Space Marine Legion. The Emperor gave his sons many toys, probably too many with how spoilt they ended up being, the biggest of which was a custom megaship for them and their Legion to act as a mobile base. Ships that were designed to be like the Titanic in space, mighty and unsinkable. Well, just like the Titanic, that proved to be a load of shit as many Legion flagships have been lost or totally annihilated, always making for some great lore as they fought to their last. Before we get started, the first thing someone notices when they look at you is your face. Not your arms, not your stomach, your face. Fortunately, the face is also the easiest thing to make look good, or at least dramatically improve. To help you with this, I've partnered up with Geology once again for this video. Your patchy, oily, dry or pimply skin isn't just a result of bad genetics or questionable health choices. Pretty much all of those issues can be fixed with a basic skincare routine. The issue is that us blokes have no idea what to do. When do you put on your moisturizer? What cleanser do I use? What the hell is eye serum? Geology takes the guesswork out of the equation by getting us to fill out a quick survey, then bam! a custom skincare routine is sent to your door. As I am in Australia, which doesn't have an ozone layer, my morning moisturizer has a little bit of sunscreen in it, whilst other people who have greater issues with acne would have a routine more suited for them. Fixing your skin is the lowest hanging fruit on your path from going from a stereotypical Warhammer neckbeard to an approachable, attractive, contributing member of society. So you'd have to be an absolute fool to not at least give it a go, especially since using my link and code MAGICAL70 below, you'll get a massive 70% off your first trial skincare package with an additional 50% off on any additional product from Geology, which includes deodorants, washes, shampoos, and everything a Warhammer fan needs. Cheers to Geology for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the status of each of the Space Marine Legion flagships. We'll also spend some time speaking of their general lore. Now let's get into it. The Dark Angel's flagship was the Invincible Reason, the first flagship ever created as befitting their status as the First Legion. It was incredibly ornate and reliable. A lot of its parts were made as one-offs due to the excitement of creating the first ever Gloriana-class ship. It served the Lion well during the Great Crusade and even better during the Heresy, engaging multiple Demon-class ships and coming out on top every single time. Despite some damage, the ship survived the Horus Heresy and remains the flagship of the Dark Angels, alongside the Rock. The second legion's flagship went to the Bermuda Triangle for its maiden voyage and was never seen again. The Emperor's Children flagship is quite ironically named the Pride of the Emperor. Definitely fucking not his pride, I'll tell you that much for free. It is by far the most ornamental flagship out of all the legions and took way longer to build as a result of this, sacrificing a lot of practicality for marble pillars, statues and other cute little things. The Pride carried Fulgrim throughout the Horus Heresy and was able to survive intact, even engaging and heavily damaging the Iron Hand's flagship in a surprise attack. Shortly after the Heresy, Gilliman and one of his heavier ships engaged the Pride, crippling it and damaging it beyond repair. As such, Fulgrim had to summon the powers of the Warp to stitch it back together, turning it into a mangled abomination, an Alibaba version of itself. The Pride hasn't been seen in ages, probably just been used as an orgy ship for the past 10 millennia. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the Iron Warriors flagship, the Iron Blood. This ship is by far the ugliest out of all the Legion flagships, with Perturaba removing all windows from it because apparently stars are gay or something. The Iron Blood was unique in that it was built in the shipyards of Olympia instead of Mars or another planet within the Sol system. It was huge, one of the largest flagships by a big margin and was more or less indestructible. The closest it ever got to being threatened was when it was boarded by a kill team of Imperial Fists, but all they managed to do was spook Perturabo. Ironically, despite Perturabo removing all windows and viewports, stating that ore specs and scanners were enough, he actually popped his head out of an open launch bay to watch the Battle of Fal which was a huge Iron Warrior vs Imperial Fist space battle. After that battle, he relented and finally installed windows in the command chamber. Sure, or specs and scanners are the best way to coordinate ships, but you don't get to see dope ass space battles that way. The Iron Blood is still probably floating around somewhere, but hasn't been seen in a long time. The White Scars flagship was the Swordstorm and was by 
by far the Mechanicum's least favourite ship to create. This is because they already made the White Scars a Gloriana class ship, but then Jagadai told them it was dog shit and they had to rebuild it according to his specifications, which basically involved making it go faster. It served the Khan well during the Great Crusade and half of the Horus Heresy, allowing him to have the speed to break out of an Alpha Legion blockade. However, during a battle against the Death Guard, the Khan baited Mortarion on board the ship and then blew it up remotely, with Mortarion barely escaping whilst most of his Death Shroud Honor Guard were killed, being too slow to get away in time. Probably not worth the sacrifice since Mortarion wasn't actually killed. The Space Wolves flagship was the Herafnicle. I swear if I just pronounced that correctly on the first try I'm actually a god. It was fucking massive, easily one of the top three biggest Gloriana class flagships. Despite this, it didn't actually feature a whole lot. Lehman would usually join one of his Yarls on their own ship during operations or wars, only very rarely commanding the Herafnicle. He would use it to engage the Sons of Horus flagship, where it was seriously damaged but managed to escape. It was then most likely destroyed during the Battle of Urant, when the Space Wolves were attacked by a fuckload of traitor Astartes and only survived due to the rescue of Corvus Corax. I say likely, as although I can't see confirmation, it was already damaged when the Battle of Urant started and it would have been a prime target. It was also never mentioned again afterwards. The Imperial Fist flagship was unique in that it wasn't a Gloriana ship, although they did have one called the Eternal Crusader, which now acts as the flagship of the Black Templars. No, the Imperial Fist had the Phalanx, a legendary mobile star fortress dating back to the Dark Age of Technology. The Phalanx would have no issue annihilating any ship or fleet for that matter, and was always avoided by the Trader Legions where possible. It survived the heresy and remains the flagship of the Imperial Fist to this very day, recently been repaired and upgraded by the Adeptus Custodes. The Night Lord's flagship was the Nightfall, a solid ship that was more or less one big torture chamber slash labyrinth. It was the Nightfall that was used as Demon Primarch Angron's prison to keep him confused and trapped until demons were allowed to manifest on Terra, hence Angron could be sent down to the surface. This was because if he had instead been placed on his own ship, he would have destroyed it from the inside out. When the Dark Angels clapped the Night Lords and scattered their legion, the ship was taken over by Gendor Skravok to be used to help Horus during the Siege of Terra. Gendor was killed by the Blood Angels chapter master Raldoron on the surface, and we have never seen the Nightfall again. There's a good chance it was destroyed during the scouring, as it was still somewhat crippled by the Dark Angels. The Blood Angels flagship was the Red Tear, and holy fuck, this ship went through some serious shit. Although serving well during the Great Crusade, it ate absolute shit at the Battle of Cygnus Prime, where the Blood Angels first encountered the forces of Chaos. Chaos was able to infect the mind of the ship's captain, causing her to murder her bridge crew and crash the ship into the planet. It was then turned into a fortress by the Blood Angels in which they waged their war against the demons from. When the demons on Cygnus Prime were purged, the absolute shitfest of the ship was then towed back to Bal, but got caught in a warp storm and instead appeared at Ultramar, where it was repaired and brought back into form as the Blood Angels flagship. It was hidden away with the Phalanx at the rim of the Soul System during the Siege of Terra as a plan B if Terra was to fall, and may still be around today, however it hasn't been mentioned as far as I know. The Iron Hands had the Fist of Iron, makes sense, which was a legendary flagship as befitting the Iron Hands mastery of technology and building, however it was ambushed and heavily damaged by the Empress Children in an act of treachery. Despite being very functional, it still had a lot of aesthetic beauty and wasn't just a dead piece of metal like the Iron Blood. Due to the damage from the Pride of the Emperor, the Fist of Iron wasn't actually present at the Isfine drop site massacre, so it could still be around in the current setting. However, just like most Iron Hands lore, it barely gets mentioned. The 11th Primarch's flagship was hijacked and crashed into the Imperium's Trade Center, causing a lot of ruckus and tomfoolery, with some even suspecting it was an inside job by Malkador. The World Eaters have a very bad flagship with some awesome lore, the Conqueror. Although an impressive ship, it was the Conqueror's captain, Lotara Sarin, who was the real MVP. The ship was massive, larger than most of its brother's ships, and fought tooth and nail across the Horus Heresy. However, when Angron ascended to become a demon prince by Lorga, the ship began to rapidly mutate. Most of the crew went insane, with the world it is using the Conqueror as one big arena and hunting ground. In her arrogance, Lotara believed that she could maintain control of the ship, whose machine spirit had become sentient due to the warp corruption. Lotara could not, eventually fusing with the ship to her horror as her soul became merged with the machine spirit. Spirit, creating an entity called the Mistress who was more or less the soul and brains of the vessel. After the heresy, the Conqueror remained active and at the forefront of many Chaos invasions of Imperial space. 
the ownership of the Conqueror traded hands many times between many different Chaos Warlords. However, none could hold it for long. Eventually, Lord Kosalax, the de facto leader of the World Eaters, was on the verge of finally conquering the Conqueror and bending the Mistress to his will. But then Angron appeared and finally retook command of his Legion, uniting Primarch with Flagship once again. The Ultramarine's flagship is called the McCrag's Honor and took an absolute beating at the Battle of Kalth, yet it survived and chased Corferon's ship into the warp. Due to some spaghetti, it got stuck in the warp, but after a few years was eventually able to pull itself out and return to Ultramar, where it would go on to survive the heresy and remain the flagship of the Ultramarine's chapter. However, when Gilliman was revived and used the McCrag's Honor to try get back to Terra, it was captured by the Red Corsairs, a Chaos Warband. Funnily enough though, the McCrag's Honor's machine spirit was so noble and loyal that it was extremely difficult for the Red Corsairs to use or corrupt it. So the Red Corsairs literally just gave it back to the Ultramarines. Back in Gilliman's hands, it once again became his flagship and was heavily upgraded by Belsarius Call. The Death Guard's flagship is the Endurance, and like its namesake, it has endured. Despite being the backbone of the Death Guard fleet, it didn't see much direct action during the Heresy, with Typhon's ship the Terminus S being more often used as the Death Death Guard's main ship. The Endurance was heavily corrupted at the same time as the Legion, becoming one big smelly piece of shit that literally houses a section of Nurgle's garden within it. It remains as Mortarian's personal ship and was used to invade the realm of Ultramar. However, with Mortarian's defeat at the hands of Gilliman, it is likely just sitting in orbit at the Plague Planet, literally licking its own wounds. The Thousand Suns flagship is the Fotep, which is more or less a big ass library. Fucking nerds. When the Space Wolves were sent to Prospero to spank Magnus, Magnus sent the Fotep amongst other ships away to safety. Eventually, those ships would find Magnus at the Planet of Sorcerers and reunite with the Legion. However, due to some confusing 4D chess, the Fotep would be used to aid the Loyalists in protecting the Magna Mata, a key ingredient that would later go on to help create the modern day Primaris Marines. The fate of the Fotep is unclear, but I think it's still floating around somewhere. The Sons of Horus have the infamous Vengeful Spirit, although they did have a twin Gloriana ship called the Magna Tyrannus, which Abaddon used as his own ship. During the Crusade and Heresy, the Vengeful Spirit was one of the largest and took a part in everything Horus did. It was the flagship of the Traitor Legions and it became so corrupt that by the Siege of Terra, it was literally a piece of flying warp. When the Emperor killed Horus, most of the ship's corruption was dispelled, with Abaddon taking it deep into the Eye of Terra. It would re-emerge as the flagship of Abaddon's newly formed Black Legion, causing massive issues for Imperial forces, but in turn nearly getting destroyed multiple times due to Abaddon's low IQ battle tactics. Most recently, it was hit with a suicide ship that blew a massive hole in it, forcing it to do an emergency warp jump to safety. It is now currently under repair within the Eye of Terra. The word bearers, those greedy sluts, had three hectic flagships. The first was the Furious Abyss, which was created in secret at the dawn of the Horus Heresy in order to try destroy McCrag. It was stopped and then destroyed by a ragtag team of Loyalist World Eaters, Space Wolves, Ultramarines, and a Loyalist Thousand Sun. The next was the Fidelitus Lex, which was destroyed by Gilliman's Vengeance Fleet in the orbit of Angram's homeworld. They gave it a death by a thousand cuts, as thousands of small ships swarmed all over it. A nice bit of revenge for the atrocity on Kalth. The final Wordbearer's flagship was the Chronicles of Ashes, which was captured by the Ultramarines during the Scouring, purged of taint, and then given to the Nemesis Chapter, one of the early Ultramarine successes. So yeah, Wordbearer's got fucked. This doesn't even include Corferon's flagship, which was destroyed by the McCrag's Honor. The Salamander's flagship wasn't actually a Gloriana-class ship, although they did have one called the Flame Rot that was destroyed during the Isfahan Dropsai Massacre. No, Vulcan created his own flagship, called the Chalice of Fire, which was one of his famous artifacts of Vulcan. The Chalice wasn't taken to Isfahan, hence was not lost there, but was lost during the subsequent battles. It drifted through the void for 10,000 years, but was recently rediscovered by the Salamanders and has been brought back home. Currently, it sits above their homeworld, acting as a mobile forge and orbitable defense system. The Raven Guard's flagship was the Shadow of the Emperor and probably had the least impressive career out of all of them. It was destroyed by the Terminus Est at the start of the Dropside Massacre. Epic. The Alpha Legion have two flagships as befitting their two Primarchs, the Alpha and the Beta. 
no shit. Both ships were heavily modified to become mazes, making boarding parties confused as shit. Both cut a large sway through Imperial ships, however with Alpharius being traitor and Omegon being secretly loyalist, they didn't end up doing as much damage as you'd think. Alpharius was able to sneak the Alpha into the Sol system, thus attack Pluto well before the rest of the traitor forces arrived. However, his arrogance was his downfall, as Rogel Dawn brutally killed Alpharius in a duel. As a result of that, the Alpha, Beta and Primarch Omegon and most of the Alpha Legion then withdrew from the Siege of Terra. Both ships haven't been seen since, but much like Omegon, are probably still active behind the scenes. Surprisingly, most Legion's flagships are still around, with a number of them even being active. Fuck the return of the Primarchs. I want to see the return of the flagships. Give me them juicy Gloriana class ship battles. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Well, there is not only a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai, but also a bunch of sexy live action nude cosplays. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more Gloriana content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.